We're back in session. Uh, would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on our agenda this evening are some presentations. And uh, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council, and um, ladies and gentlemen in the audience. Uh, I'd like to ask Roberta Cotman to uh, come to the podium. Um, this evening, I'm presenting a proclamation on uh, Women's Equality Day, which um, Due to our meeting schedule, um, we did not present earlier in the month. Um, it was last Friday, uh, August 26th. And I would like to read the uh, proclamation to you. Whereas in 1971, the US Congress designated August 26th as Women's Equality Day to commemorate the 1920 uh, certification of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, granting women the right to vote. And whereas, generated uh, because of lower wages, poor working conditions, and limited opportunities for women in the workplace, the women's rights movement united women across the United States in a peaceful campaign to fight for equal rights and privileges where, um, which were rather available to only male citizens. And whereas, because millions of women who planned, organized, marched, uh, petitioned and lobbied every field of business and labor, changed the world for generations of women to receive better working conditions, fair wages, and equal rights. And whereas, one of the most notable leaders of the women's uh, suffrage movement, Susan B. Anthony, co-founded the New York uh, Women's State Temperance Society after she was presented, prevented from speaking at a conference because she was female. Many years later, Miss Anthony would become the first woman to appear on, the, uh, on a U.S. coin, the 1979 U.S. dollar. And whereas the month of August is an annual uh, declared month to highlight the contributions of women, women's events in history and modern day society, women such as Kate Mullaney, organizer of the first all-male uh, labor union, Maggie Lena Walker, the first African-American woman uh, in the U.S. to charter a bank, and Norma uh, Yeager, first woman stockbroker, uh, to be permitted on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, as well as many others. And whereas in commemoration of the passage of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution gra uh, granting women the right to vote, we recognize and commend the women who led this peaceful campaign grading, uh, granting women the right to vote. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Kenson Siver, Mayor of the City of Southfield County of Oakland, State of Michigan, do hereby proclaim August 26th, uh, 2017, as Women's Equality Day in the city of Southfield encouraged the residents and businesses of Southfield to reflect and celebrate the diverse and historic accomplishments of women to the equality, uh, uh, the quality of life in our community. To Ms. Cotman, I present this, and uh, again, we were thinking of you on, on Friday. Thank you very much. And I'm very glad and to remember. And this is just a prelude to the women and the right to vote. And so I present tonight, first of all, the symbolic representation of the United States of America to women the currency. I present the Susan B. Anthony coin. You, Susan B. Anthony. And the march and the suffrage. The one dollar coin. And the other coin 
designated to women, e pluribus union, in God we trust, is the dollar coin of Sakacho Weir. And if you don't know who she is, she led the Lewis Clark expedition through North America. And not only that, but she finished that expedition with a papoose on her back. And the tribute to African American women and the African diaspora will be the $20 bill. On the face of the $20 bill will be the face of Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. But led the Underground Railroad. We are women, hear us roar. Thank you very much, Ms. Cotman, and uh, to Kamisha Gant. Thank you very much. I would also like to, uh, I neglected when I started the meeting to apologize for the lightness of the, us getting started. Our, prior, our first half of our meeting ran on a little longer than we had anticipated. Um, the next uh, presentation is an overview of South Hill Cor Corporate Community Cup Challenge and presentation, Ms. Freeman. Good evening, Mr. President, Honorable Board, Honorable Mayor. Um, on behalf of the City of Southfield, it was a true pleasure to work with um, Terry Fields and our Park Park Parks and Recreation Department, and of course, Chris Riley, to work with many of our outstanding companies in the City of Southfield to put on our first Community Cup Challenge. A couple of our committee members are here, and I'd like them to come forward, if possible, the wonderful ladies from HAP, and Chris Riley, come on up. And I'm not sure if Cindy Parr is here from Mars Advertising, but in the um, last winter, a group of companies came together to um, talk about, you know, different community projects that the companies do for the city of Southfield, and they do a lot of outstanding work, donating their time and energy to get involved and to help the city and parks and recreation. And out of that came us out of a simple discussion came the thought that we should start this community cup challenge to bring the business community together. And so, um, just wanted to share a quick overview. Um, and I, again, want to thank the committee so much. Laura and Tamara and Cindy and all the people at Mars and HAP, they came up with this beautiful logo that we hope to use in future events, but the Southfield Community Cup. And um, so we're really impressed by, by that work. We appreciate it. But um, the events kicked off with our first Eat to the Beat in June. And then we had six weeks of activities. And I have, um, there was uh, 16 teams involved, um, ARIA, the City of Southfield, Kamau, Credit Acceptance Corporation, Eaton, HAP, Hello World, IHS Market, Lawrence Tech, Moncourt, MSX International, Redico, Robert Half, Sandler and Travis Trade Advisory Services, the Marge, Mars Agency, and Vibe Credit Union. So we had a really wonderful cross-section of businesses, and this um, competition really gave people a great chance to interact. At our first kickoff, we had um, over 250 people um, coming out to watch the event and 50 people participating along with volunteers. And again, it kicked off at our Eat to the Beat. Um, the next week was our Quiz Bowl, um, and it was sponsored by 
um, Vibe Credit Union, and the, the HAP ladies really helped us pull this event off, too, so we appreciate them, at Nomad's Grill. Um, then we had a golf scramble, um, and we truly appreciate all the work from Beachwoods and Terry um, and everyone at the golf course and Parks and Rec with this event. Then we had an outstanding kickball tournament, which has led to a young professionals um, kickball tournament taking place with the chamber. Then um, you'll all, if any of you had a chance to come into our pavilion, the closing ceremony was on July 13th, and it was called Can Struction. And many of us contributed canned goods and money to help support gleaners, and it was just a phenomenal event. And here's just some really cool pictures of the activities that took place. And our dear friends at HAP, I don't know, we kind of think the fix was in, but not sure. <laughs> anyway, they worked really hard, and they ended up winning the, the, the entire event. We're very proud of them. And I'll let them share a couple of moments. But um, Gleaners did a phenomenal job. They were able to um, support 31,000. Um, 158 meals because of the donations that we collected and the money that we collected. And I believe that Myra, Myra is here from uh, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence's office. I don't see her. She had a certificate for you as well to thank you for all of your hard work in organizing that event. But it was just really an outstanding event, and everyone had a really great time. And we were hoping, Mr. Mayor, that you could present the trophy to, to HAP, even though we want, we're, ne we're coming back next year strong. <laughs> well, congratulations. Again, this was really an outstanding way to bring all the businesses together. We're looking forward to next year's event. We already started planning, and we truly appreciate all the support that the city has given us with this activity. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was one of the judges on the uh, construction, and uh, I'll tell you that the winners did a marvelous job. I mean, I mean, it was just, well, hands down. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the next presentation is the Southfield Fire Department open house. Uh, is there someone? Ah, the chief is hiding in the back. Good evening, Mr. President, Council, Mr. Mayor, citizens and visitors of Southfield. I'm Chief. I'm Fire Chief Johnny Minifee, and I want to formally invite the Southfield community out to this year's Fire Open House. Um, this year um, marks our 75th anniversary of delivering tireless service to our community, and we want to give back and have a, a fun event with, with everyone in the community. Um, we believe that there's something for everyone at this event. Um, we'll have health screenings, um, free education, we have uh, bouncy houses, face painting for the kids. They can participate and, and, and work a real fire hose, fire demonstrations, extrication, rapid intervention. So I believe it's, it's going to be a fun event for everyone. This is going to be September 10th from 11 to 4. Um, you are allowed to park at Southville a and the main fire headquarters address is 24477 Losser. Like I said, we're just south of the high school. Um, we would love for the community to come out and, and share this event right on the eve of 9-11 um, for us. It's, uh, it's a fun time, a free event, something for everybody, and uh, we hope to see you there. Okay. You know, the, uh, the fire department does a, a wonderful job, and I'm a, uh, a, I can attest to that. Um, but this is on September the 10th from 11 to 4, and September the 11th, or 9-11, uh, showed how United States can pull together as a team. And coincidentally, 
we have the Southfield Community Pride Award on the following day, uh, Monday, uh, September the 11th. So this all fits in together to show how Southfield really is a team. So uh, come out Sunday, then come out Monday. Thank you. We have some appointments this evening. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Good evening once again. I'd like to uh, call up um, Bill or William Burlingame uh, from Eaton Corporation and Kimberly uh, Peterson from Transwestern. Um, Council, you will recall that um, you approved the expansion of the city center uh, district. And with that expansion, uh, we asked and you approved the um, expansion of the City Center Advisory Board uh, uh, by two members. Uh, so this evening, um, I'm presenting uh, one of the new members, which uh, of the additional two, which is um, Bill Burlingame of Eaton. Who, um, Bill serves as the facility manager uh, at the corporation down the street on Civic Center Drive. And then um, uh, Kimberly Peterson um, is replacing um, uh, Kim Heslop, who um, is no longer with Transwestern. Uh, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Peterson is a 20-year employee of uh, Transwestern. These are the managers of the town center complex, very vital to our, our city center um, um, uh, operations. And uh, she serves as senior vice president and uh, general manager. So I'm recommending both of, um, of these folks to the city center advisory board. And I'd ask your approval this evening. OK, I do I have a motion? Support. No, I do. I need a motion. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve these appointments. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Brightwell, supported by Ms. Morris, that we approve the appointments to the City Center Advisory Board as presented by the Mayor. Is there any discussion? Are we prepared to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It is carried. I, um, before you do the swearing in, if I could introduce yeah, the other, other person and then would swear the, the uh, group in. Um, also, um, it will take effect of, uh, uh, in September. I'd like to ask um, Michael McFarland uh, to come forward if he's in the audience. Um, Mr. McFarland, I'm tapping to serve on the de uh, Downtown Development uh, Board. Um, his uh, appointment would actually uh, take place in September. He's replacing someone whose term expires. Uh, but I bring him before you tonight so that he's uh, up and ready to go. Um, uh, Mr. McFarland has lived in the city a number of years, and he lives in the district uh, in Providence uh, Towers. Uh, and uh, I'm very glad to welcome him. He's had great interest in our uh, uh, DDA and the, um, uh, the citizens group that uh, has served for years. Uh, so I'd, I would also like a motion to approve the appointment of Mr. <coughs> McFarland to the DDA, and then I'd ask the clerk to do the uh, oath. Swearing in. So moved. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Mandelbaum, supported by Ms. Morris, that we appoint to the Downtown Development Authority, Mr. Michael McFarland. Is there any discussion? Are we prepared to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It is carried. Madam Clerk. If you'd raise your right hand, please. Do you hereby swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of this state, and the Southfield City Charter, and that you will faithfully perform the duties of the uh, city, city Center Advisory Board and the Downtown Development Board of Southfield County of Oakland, State of Michigan, according to the best of your ability? Okay. okay thank you. Yes. 
congratulations. Thank you. And very Abdullah, much. okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are you going to come forward? Yes. Well, just, just say it, please. And Abdullah, then. We don't have this line. Thank you. Right, end this one, please. Okay. And then I'll fill everything else. In. Here we go. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Yes. Hey, I have been on board. I love it. We have uh, two sets of minutes to approve. Also, Mr. Chairman, they both they committed the whole of July 10th and regular meeting of July 24th. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Fricassi, supported by Mr. Mandelbaum, that we approve the minutes of the committee of the whole of July the 10th and the minutes of the regular meeting of July the 24th. Is there any discussion? Are we prepared to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It is carried. Uh, we have a number of items on the consent agenda. Uh, is there anyone that has anything that they want to discuss? Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to discuss item G. Okay. Uh, we will skip over that one, come back, come back to that. Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Fricassi. H. H. Okay, we'll skip over that one, come back to that one. Okay, item A is the Economic Development Initiative. And uh, the staff is seeking authorization to conduct two public hearings on Monday, September the 25th, 2017, to establish an uh, industrial development district under Public Act 198 of 1974 as amended. Item B is the Northland easements. We had uh, a discussion earlier this evening and there were around 850 easements that were uh, clogging up the works at Northland. Uh, we've got them, we hired uh, Hubble, Roth and Clark to sort through them. They're down to about 30, and we need to have an expert that understands the uh, uh, easement process. So we are asking for uh, the approval to hire the, uh, ser the services of Kickham Hanley uh, Law Firm to work out the final resolution of those last uh, easements. Uh, item C is authorization to contract for detention facilities operations. The uh, police department has a detention center over at the police station and they have used G G4S uh, in the past years. They put it out for bids. G4S uh, was a winning bid. Uh, it provides corrections officers that have successfully completed the American Correctional Association training program and certification process. And it's the contract will be for a one year period effective September 1st, 2017 through August 31st, 2018, 
with an option to extend for up to two one-year periods. Uh, expenditures for this are not to ex exceed uh, $900,100. Uh, consent agenda item D is to rescind the traffic control order P-38-69 in September 2nd, 1969, there were some uh, no parking signs put up in the uh, uh, Green Spruce Lane, uh, Pierce Street, Glasgow Street area, and we did pass another uh, traffic control order that superseded these, so we want to rescind the traffic control order Number P38-69, uh, consent agenda item E is receipt of bids on water main installation and repair parts for the water and sewer department. And the council, they want the council to approve the purchase of water main parts from HD Supply Water Works of Canton Township, Michigan for the period of August 29th, 2017 through August 28, 2018, the expenditures will not exceed $144,970.66. Item number F is authorization, or to authorize, authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the MEDC grant agreement for the Red Pole Park. Uh, we will soon be putting uh, another piece of, of public art up is called the Red Pole Park. Uh, the deal was that we had to raise $50,000 in order to qualify for the MEDC's $50,000 grant. We raised $55,145 and so we're eligible for the grant and when the grant comes in we need the, the uh, mayor and the city clerk to be able to sign for that. So we need their approval. Uh, G, we're going to skip for a second. H, we're going to skip for a second. I is the Southfield Police Department, United States Department of Justice 2017 uh, Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Grant. And we've had these in the past. It's the it's a grant that comes from the federal government. It's the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice assistance grant, and it will be worth $17,372 if we're awarded it again, but the police department needs authorization to apply for that grant. Uh, item J is the settlement of litigation. We uh, went into closed session earlier to talk about settlement of uh, a lawsuit against the city for uh, uh, for uh, Northland uh, for the water bill, and we've agreed on a, a price of $65,000 to settle that, and we're asking the council to uh, approve that settlement. Uh, the last is uh, Southfield Smart Zone Business Accel Accelerator Grant application and it's uh, asking the Southfield to adopt a resolution uh, authorizing the city administration authority to sign all co-applicant materials associated with the proposed business accelerator with Lawrence Technological University and there's a, several other uh, uh, official documents that the city administrator is being asked to sign. Uh, with that, I'd let, ask for a motion to approve items A, B, C, D, E, F, I, J, and K. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Support. Support. <clears throat> it's been moved by Mr. Ficasi, supported by Mr. Cruz, that we approve the consent agenda items as presented. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, it is carried. Item G, uh, was pulled for discussion, uh, Mr. Cruz. Yep. So um, I just wanted to have a 
I guess kind of voice somewhat of a concern about this piece. So an item G deals with a, a donation of artwork that uh, came to the mayor and he brought it to us uh, from uh, Doug Douglas Ratcliffe North and what is, um, and it's in the form of a, a, a statue of a Wolverine and it's a, a tribute, if you will, I guess to uh, former president Gerald Ford. And uh, so it's a, it's a statue of Wolverine with a um, that's mounted, and then it has a plaque that sits under it. It says, "In memory of Gerald Ford, uh, proud Michigander from the Great Wolverine State." And then it goes on to list a number of um, the, uh, Mr. Ford's, uh, President Ford's accomplishments. And and the, my only kind of hesitation about this, and I, and I have this about naming any kind of sculpture or figure about you know for someone, um, especially this because, I mean, everybody might not be in, have been in favor of Gerald Ford, may not think he was a great president or didn't like him for whatever reasons. I mean, it's a partisan, being president is a partisan position. So, I mean, does it look like the city has a side in this one way or the other politically um, as opposed to somebody that might be nonpartisan? And, and are we setting ourselves up for potentially a slippery slope of other uh, statues or memoriams to other types of other presidents or other elected officials that, you know, people might like or want to see. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, even though he was the only president to come from Michigan, um, the connection to Southfield, in my mind, really kind of is not there. So uh, it would be different maybe there was some kind of additional connection back to the city. So uh, I just wanted us to consider that as we were thinking about bringing this in and more so concerned, I think, just about, um, you know, opening up um, a desire for, you know, maybe, you know, the, it might be a request or a donation from somebody else that wants to put a statue of Barack Obama in Southfield because he's first black president and we're majority African-American city, okay? So you, people can make cases for why to have certain things in certain places all the time. And so I just want to make sure that we feel comfortable uh, with putting something up like this in the city of Southfield and that our residents would be comfortable with it as well. So um, that's kind of just what I wanted to add. I know I had expressed this to the mayor earlier in the week a little bit more, and I, if you like, I'd like you to, and you did give me some feedback on that if you want to share that as well as part of this consideration. Uh, <clears throat> this donation um, is not political per se, it, it just gives a biography of Gerald R. Ford, and um, um, I do not know. Is your microphone um, on? I, my mic is on, yeah. Uh, I do not know um, uh, Mr. Uh, North, uh, but he contacted me. He had heard that um, uh, about our interest in public art in the city of Southfield. And I did take this first to the Public Art Commission. Um, they recommended its uh, acceptance um, and asked me to forward it on to the council, uh, which I'm doing this evening. Okay. And I, I would recommend accepting it, a placement on the uh, outdoor pavilion. Um, it's coming to us at no cost to the city. Uh, we discussed this earlier and <laughs> It will be located on the pavilion around uh, between the police and the in the, the outdoor plaza. Right? Yes, yeah, the outdoor plaza. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we accept the art donation. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Mandelbaum, supported by Mr. Brightwell, that we accept the art donation by Douglas Radcliffe North. Is there any further discussion? Are we prepared to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Uh, let the record show that it passed with two uh, no votes. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Fricasi, you pulled uh, H? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, it had to do with, uh, not with the Art or the suggestion that that this be a recommendation of the Arts Council, but uh, uh, this happens to be, as far as I'm very sensitive to the police memorial that sits out in front of City Hall, just uh, south end of the building, and uh, I feel this would just be 
uh, something that would uh, take away from the police memorial. I know that's part of the Northland collection. It's a great piece of art, and I would like to hope that it be put in a, a, a really a nice spot on this site somewhere, but not particularly in either the, the Veterans Memorial or the Police Memorial. I think those should be set aside by themselves. <coughs> Is that it? Yes. Is there any other discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll move that this uh, item be um, installed in another location other than by the police memorial on the city of Southfield site. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Mr. Fricassi, supported by Mr. Mandelbaum, that the uh, Etrog, I got to think how I'm going to do this now. Are we are we going to? Or oh, we already own the thing, so we don't have to accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Part uh, of the Northland okay. Collection. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's been moved by Mr. Fricassi, supported by Mr. Mandelbaum, that the location be changed from the current uh, proposed location to another location to be determined later. Is that? And I'd like to see it on this site, but because it's really a pretty yes. uh, sculpture, art piece. Is there any discussion? Yes. Uh, Ms. Morris. I, I do like the fact that uh, the Arts Commission has doing such a great job, but I, I'm not so sure that every piece of art is, that is donated, you know, we have to accept. But I do feel that... Um, the different requests to place art in different places, they're coming so sporadic. And if there was just an opportunity to see a strategic plan for the overall city, I think in the meeting earlier, um, Councilman Fricazzi as well as Council President Frazier had suggested that maybe a plan be set forth to the council. Yes, we have elected we have appointed the commission to provide suggestions, but at the end of the day, it is the council who is making the final decision on uh, these pieces of art and where they should be placed. So I'd just like to um, also say that I'd like to see at least some kind of plan. It looks like the, uh, the members of the commission have some kind of idea on where they want art to be placed. But if we could just know, um, you know what your ideas are and what your plans are um, before um, we are asked to vote, to vote like ind ind on individual places, at, le at least we can see a plan for what you're, you're, you're trying to do in terms of what you want to do with art. Um, I would like to see that. Any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Brightwell. Mr. Chair, I think we, we brought up in the, in the council um, uh, study that there, and I've requested this several months ago, uh, even when the Art Commission first established that, that we are presented with sites within the city that are appropriate for a um, piece of art. And it was indicated that in the art book, an art uh, publication, that, that is, there is such a, a listing available to various sites in the city. I think that should be reminded, uh, shared again with the council because it seemed to keep coming up that, that, that there's no particular plan in place, but I think there's a, a document, at least that's what I heard from the planner, uh, that there's a document that lists the various slots, I mean various places for um, art to be placed. And um, If there are um, pieces of art, Northland art that's currently in storage, if we can um, ideally go through that particular list, which, which has been published, and say this is an ideal spot for this piece of art, it should, should be some floor planning uh, place if we do have the locations already um, established. Uh, Mr. Cruz. Yeah, I'm, I did. As I mentioned in a study session, I actually like the location of it. I thought it looked uh, very aesthetically appealing. I thought it fit nicely out front here, and I would hope that we would go with it. But um, at least at this point, I think that the request simply was just to authorize the seeking of bids for installation. That, so does that location have to be firm now, or can we just authorize the bids? I mean, is it, would that affect, would the bid process affect where it's located? Well, uh, my, the, my understanding is that 
when they came to us, they have a location and they want to have, go out to have bids that for that location. Okay. And the motion is to find a new location. Okay, got gotcha. you. That's is there any, any other discussion? Are we prepared to vote? All those in favor of the motion, which is to find a different location for the Etrog uh, sculpture, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Now, Madam Clerk, would you please call a roll? Opposed. Mr. Fricassi. Opposed. You can't oppose your own motion. Well, this is, no, you're talking about opposing the it, no, item? No, your motion. You say it again. No, I, Pardon? no, I'm in favor of it being located somewhere else, so it's yes. That's what well, that's what your motion is. Yeah, okay. But you can't, you can't oppose your own motion. I, well, I just wanted a clarification, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Can you read the motion again? Ms. Morris. Can you read the motion again, Council President? I, the, I, go ahead. Go ahead. I believe the motion is to um, change the, to approve the request, however, to change the location to another location within the city property. Is that correct? Yes. Support. Mr. Mandelbaum? Yes. Mr. Cruz? Opposed. Mr. Um, Frazier? Opposed. We have a tie vote, so the motion failed. Okay. Uh, so we are going to accept it, and it's going to go to the right? I, I, you already own it, so I guess yeah, it it's would owned, but I mean, back. yeah, we're going, to, we're going to accept the bids to mm -hmm. put no. it. I think you need to know the location before you... The well, the, the motion failed because it didn't get a majority of the votes. The motion failed right. to relocate it. But there's no motion to place it out Okay, so either. we need to... So you could try that motion. Okay. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we place the piece of art in the location which was suggested near the police memorial. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Brightwell, supported by Mr. Cruz, that we authorize the acceptance of the uh, location for installation of the Etrog sculpture. The, the go out for bids. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Aye. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mr. Cruz? Support. Mr. Brightwell? Support. Mr. Fricassi? No. Mr. M Ms. Morris? Opposed. Mr. Mandelbaum? Opposed. Mr. Frazier? Support. 3-3, um, three, three, the motion failed. This will come up later on. We'll, uh, we'll <clears throat> postpone this motion until, or postpone this item until uh, we have an odd number of people at the council. Uh, that completes the... Uh, Wait a minute. What do you mean, odd person? <laughs> Another odd person. <laughs> we have a number of public hearings. Public hearing A uh, is the Economic Development Initiative. Good evening. Um, as part of the city's ongoing economic development initiatives, the staff is in receipt of a request from SLT Holdings LLC for a commercial rehabilitation exemption certificate. This will aid in the renovation of the New Soul Gardens restaurant. Rebecca Lazarus is here for, um, with a presentation um, to go over their project. Um, there are um, we would be requesting, one, the establishment of an industrial development district, or the commercial rehabilitation, excuse me, district um, at the first public hearing, and then the following public hearing would be to um, hear her request. Um, the city 
staff is supporting a ten year, a uh, five year, um, is suggesting five years on her request for um, freezing the values at the the current value. So I'd like to ask um, Rebecca to come come up. Good evening, Council President. Honorable. Do you give your name and address for the record? Oh, your I'm, address. It. My you name, name is Rebecca Lazarus. I'm here representing SLT Holdings. Their address is 27566 Northwestern Highway, Southfield, Michigan, 48034. Um, I'd like to say good evening again, and thank you for allowing us to speak in front of you. Um, the presentation is to request a five to ten year tax abatement. The property is was built originally in 1983. 1983. It's a 2.8 acres of property. It is currently a 9,834 square foot building, single floor, and it has excessive parking currently. It is a, a cement block construction and it has a taxable value just over a half a million dollars. Uh, the current state of the building, because it was built back in 83 by the Chi Chi's Corporation, is cosmetically renovated in 91 into the New Soul Garden Restaurant, which it is today. Um, it has operated as that for over 26 years in the current state that it's in. Um, on a normal transfer of liquor license on June 22nd. The city inspections found that there was many obsolete um, infrastructure necessary repairs that needed to be done. And the owners agree with that and they would like to do some interior and exterior, extensive interior and exterior uh, repairs to it. This is an example. There's many leaks in the roof. The exterior um, condition is deteriorating. Uh, this is a 26-year-old building. Some of the problems that this building has incurred, as well as the other properties on this Northwestern Highway strip between Telegraph and Bell Road, is that it has been an orphaned piece of Northwestern Highway, and it's very difficult to get to. The street signs are improperly marked. There's actually, people think that it's 11 mile, and uh, there really is no signs for Northwestern Highway. So these businesses have suffered over the, uh, since early six, uh, 1960s when 696 was built. So we require that, we request the city to help overcome this serious problem for people and customers to find these businesses. Um, our proposed renovation is to completely renovate the existing um, 9,834 square foot building interior and exterior, completely gutting it, turning it into from a single Korean barbecue restaurant into three separate Asian in, in, uh, themed restaurants, an authentic Korean barbecue restaurant, a fusion restaurant with a bar and karaoke, and a French Korean cafe. We will additionally add onto the structure uh, a new construction of a 9,000 square foot standalone building, which will be Gangnam Market, which will be featuring Korean specialty foods that no one can uh, purchase anywhere around in this area. There will also be completely site uh, improvements. Parking lot will be refinished and repaved. Lighting, walkable paths will be added to encourage uh, walking in the neighborhood, and two garden patios will be added to the facility. This is an example of what our site plan has been approved. The market would be at the top, and the existing building is at the bottom. This is the interior of how the uh, current uh, restaurant will be broken into three different restaurants, and they will be sharing the same kitchen. This is a color elevation of the three restaurant facility, which would be the renovation. And this is the market. It would be a sister and brother uh, building. With this development, we are creating at least 42 additional new jobs. 
Uh, we will also create around or over 35 new construction jobs. And the uh, new SLT will invest over $2.1 million and going up to $4.2 million into this renovation. They are definitely gambling on Southfield. We will hope that this sparks new urban renewal in this um, section. It has high visibility to travelers along Northwestern Highway and um, the M10 North Lodge Freeway strip, and it will bring new dining uh, entertainment to Southfield. Um, so again, the request is to establish the uh, commercial rehabilitation district, and um, they're requesting uh, up to 10 years. Again, the city staff is requesting is in support of five years for their freezing of the taxes. Um, the new development will keep it frozen, um, but the city will continue to collect approximately $50,000 annually, and then once the property um, it is uncapped or the, the property goes back to its regular taxes, the city assessor will have been met, will go out and evaluate the property each year. So we will continue to capture funds from the site. And we are looking to establish the district um, on the surrounding properties as well. Um, as Ms. Lazarus has stated, this area has had some challenges over the years. I think that some of it started to occur when there was some redevelopment of the lodge, but Copper Canyon has suffered, Baymont. Um, we understand that Plant Moran has um, some issues with their building, and so we wanted to include that whole district in all those properties within this district. So. Um, That's the presentation. Oh. Yes. I thought you had more. No. <clears throat> Council? Oh, excuse so, me. So the public hearing would be for the establishment of the district? Right, the establishment Please. of the district. Okay. Is there any, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this? If you come to the microphone, give your name and address for the record, you have three minutes. All I see is a white piece of paper. You don't have to come up here. I understand you can't talk. Okay. The note on there was that she supports the, the project. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Council, now it's council. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Mandelbaum. Just a question for Ms. Freeman. Mm -hmm. Because in the presentation it was mentioned that this area is not, the signage is not the greatest, does the city have any plans? Because I, as I understand it, 11 Mile is a city owned, there's a city street. Are there any plans for, for better signage to direct people to these locations? Um, we will work with, with uh, the Public Works Department and planning to help address better signage. The city is also um, considering engaging um, a consultant to assist us with better branding on Telegraph Road, which will enable a better flow of traffic into this whole mixing bowl area. And so we're in the process of working that out as well. So we know that um, several years ago we considered Telegraph to be a technology corridor, and so we want to try and formalize that um, branding for the road, and it'll include this whole district. Okay, thank you. Mr. Braywell. Mr. Chair, I support this, uh, this endeavor, and I'm, I'm of the mind that um, uh, a raising tide, rising tide, raise all boats. So I think that we get something going over there, and I know our, our accountant is down mm -hmm. the street, and I, obviously I met with our accountant off and on, and one of the uh, issues uh, when we were not talking about city financial matters, 
was direction to their particular office. And it's been a, a hardship for them to uh, you know, direct customers and or individuals to their office. So I, I think I, I mentioned this before in, in the study session that I would like to see something moving forward with respect to getting better wayfinding and or signage uh, to that particular um, uh, strip, well, that, 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 in, in, in essence, that particular road. Uh, so, but I am in supportive of the um, the, uh, the project, and I think that they are doing a, a wonderful job in trying to redevelop uh, that particular location. You want to make a motion to establish the uh, commercial rehab rehabilitation district? Uh, yes, sir. I guess I guess did. I make a motion that uh, we establish the um, commercial rehab rehabil the commercial rehab rehabilitation district. Support. For it's been moved by Mr. Brightwell, supported by Ms. Morris, that we approve the, uh, uh, rehab the Commercial Rehabilitation District under Act 210 of 2005. Uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And we'll take the recommendation of the Mr. staff. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to abstain due to the fact that Rebecca was when secretary when I was acting mayor. Do you have a financial? Uh... No, we do not. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll accept his uh, abstention, but it's well, usually I'm... a very narrow reason for abstaining if you have a financial or if there's, so when there's a beneficial. Qu when there's questions, I'd like to stay safe. All okay. Right. So. All right. All right. So the next public hearing would be to accept their application for SLT Holding LLC for a commercial rehabilitation exemption certificate for the PA 210. Again, um, staff is supporting a five-year exemption. Um, the company will have the opportunity at the end of that five years to come back to city council to get an extension or an additional up to five years. Um, at the discretion of City Council. So it's not closing the door for them to get additional time. So that would be built into the, the application. And I do want to note that the city staff, uh, myself and um, Michael Radcliffe, have met with the other property owners and shared the opportunities for them to come forward at, at any time that they so choose to take advantage of this resource as well. This is a public hearing. And if there's anyone in the audience that wishes to uh, speak on this public hearing, I presume it's the same thing. She, she supports a five-year extension also. Exemption. Is Exemption. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Come to the microphone, give your name and address for the record. And you have three minutes. You can talk. You don't have to write it out. It's just that she has a particular issue with her voice this evening. So, seeing no one else, I will close the public hearing. Council? Mr. President. Uh, I'd, like Mr. To, Cruz. I'd like to move that we accept application from SLT Holding LLC for the commercial rehabilitation exemption certificate for the year for five years. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Cruz, supported by Mr. Mandelbaum. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. Uh, let the record show there's five yeas and one abstention. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Um, item C. Mr. Chairman, before yes, you move on to that, yes. uh, other than this property that we just voted on, but the signage there um, for, I don't know, when I was acting mayor, we tried to work with MDOT to try to get some kind of signs on Telegraph Road. But something really has to, we have to get a traffic engineer to look at what can be done, you have uh, uh, Toys R Us that's sitting there and, um, and I, you know, it changed hands, but 
uh, it's another th thing. Why didn't they fix up the building before they put used car used cars on it? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And and that didn't come to us to see whether or not it was sold, not sold. But it's also in that district, if I'm not wrong, Shelley. Toys R Us is that in that no, district? Right. Okay, why not? Wasn't that involved in it? Um, there was some discussion of the um, concern regarding other auto dealerships, and there might be. Um, they, it, it was just determined that it would not be added Make into the district. Make any improvements on that piece? I believe that they are planning on it. Yes. I'd like to have our planner follow through on that, because that's. You know, they didn't do anything. They didn't even remove the. You can see Toys R Us still on it, and. It's not maintained, it's not landscaped, it's not... Right, there. through the chair, we have not received an official application for that property. It is my understanding that the dealer has acquired it and yeah. possibly will combine a part, part of that for his fleet of parking cars and possibly open a second dealership in that building, but nothing has materialized to date. Does that mean it stays the way it is after a new person buys a piece of property? I mean, they, it's really... And, and what I'm trying to get at, Council and, and, and Terry, is that if you get off of Telegraph Road, you go to Toys R Us, then you go to this other, the restaurant, then you go, there's an office building that's way back, and then there's, then there's a Copper Canyon, then the hotel, and, and then we have Plant Moran, and then it come, becomes Bell Road. Uh, so the, the church has Bell Road address, Plant Moran has Northwestern address. I don't know what this one has, but it's just quite messed up. So if you're looking for Northwestern, you know we're just doing the improvement on Northwestern west of Telegraph Road now. And, and nobody knows that this is Northwestern on the east side of Telegraph. And, I, and I'd really like to have that looked at for all those buildings, and I don't know how Pam Moran can sit there with all their office people and people trying to find that place and they have a Northwestern address. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'd just like to make that comment that something really has to be done with that piece. And the road is is not very good either. So it's been yeah. neglected, that whole area. Yeah, most people think uh, US 10 is Northwestern Highway, yeah. which it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if... Uh, the uh, MDOT will be uh, willing to put a sign up uh, just beyond the bridge before the, before the uh, entrance ramp off of US 10 that says uh, Northwestern Highway next traffic signal. I've seen those uh, popping up recently to give you a warning that the, you know, a cross street is coming up in the next you know, at the next traffic signal. So that would uh, be a helpful wayfinding sign. Uh, you know, I don't know if they'd be willing to put another sign on, on Telegraph Road. They'd, they'd probably uh, fall back and say, well, it's another opportunity for an accident, somebody to run into a... Uh, but uh, they won't put it up if we don't ask. I'll work with the uh, city administrator and the city engineer, see if we can pursue that. Sure. Okay. Uh, public hearing C. Through the chair. Um, our next public hearing is PSLU 17-0003, a special use request of World of Entertainment on behalf of the owner, Garmo Properties to occupy a tenant space in the Majestic Market Shopping Center for a dance instruction studio, properly located at 25843 Losser Road. This is the southwest corner of Civic Center and Losser Road. I have a brief video presentation. Okay. <clears throat> SLU 17-0003 is a special use request of Whirl of Entertainment on behalf of the owner, Garmel Properties, to permit a dance studio within the B3 General Business District. 
The property is located at 25843 Lasser Road within the Majestic Plaza Shopping Center at the southwest corner of Lasser Road and Civic Center Drive in Section 21 of the city. The subject property is zone B3 general business. The property to the north across Civic Center Drive is zoned ERO Education Research Office. The property to the south is zoned RM Multiple Family Low Rise. The property to the east across Lasser Road is zoned B3 General Business and OS Office Service. The property to the west is zoned R2 Single Family Residential. With regard to the existing land uses, the subject property is developed with the Majestic Plaza Shopping Center. To the north is a green belt for the property with Civic Center Drive and the Great Lakes Surgical Center beyond. To the south is a masonry screen wall with the Village Crest Condominium development beyond. To the east is a parking lot for the shopping center with Lasser Road beyond. And to the west is a parking lot for the property with a masonry wall topped with a wooden fence. The site contains 1.92 acres of land with 377 feet of frontage on Lasser Road and a depth of approximately 225 feet along Civic Center Drive. The special land use request is to permit a dance studio within the B3 General Business District. Issues considered by the Planning Department during the review of the special use were special use standards and conditions of Article 18 General Business, Southfield Comprehensive Master Plan noting local mixed use for this parcel, and the petitioners to implement the recommendations made by the Southfield Police Department's Crime Prevention Bureau regarding site security. The petitioners here to make some opening comments. Okay, if you'd give your name and uh, business address for the record. Yes. You Good evening, my name is Tamara Patterson Green and this is my husband and business partner, Bobby Green. Our business is World of Entertainment located at 25851 Lasser Road, Southfield, Michigan 48033. Uh, and as stated in the video, we are a dance studio seeking a special land use permit to conduct dance classes and dance events. Our hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. until 12 a.m., and Saturday, or excuse me, Sunday, 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. by appointment only. Uh, we liken ourselves to other dance studios that most are familiar with, such as Arthur Murray and Fred Astaire, and we offer a wide range of classes from bachata, Detroit ballroom, salsa, tango, and zumba. Our classes are taught by certified and or well-seasoned instructors, and we also open, uh, offer open dances where patrons may come and dance the various dance styles that they've learned, um, as well as other potential customers that are looking to learn uh, with us. We've uh, addressed previous concerns brought uh, forth by the Planning Commission, um, which is that uh, there, we will not be permitting alcohol use on our property and we have posted no alcohol signs um, on the premises and we will continue to monitor uh, for any alcohol use uh, should that present itself. We will, of course, uh, ask the patron to remove it from our facility and or exit at that time. Uh, in addition to that, uh, for capacity and the control of occupants within our space at any one given time uh, was another topic that was presented and we have addressed the issue by adding personnel to monitor the door during open dance events as well as structured some future events to require pre-registration. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any comments that you'd like to make? At this time, thank you. Okay. Uh, Planner, do you have any other not, comments? Not at this time. Okay, if you take a seat, this is a public hearing, and uh, you can sit right. You, sit, you can sit right there, in case there's a question that comes up that you need to answer. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this public hearing? If you do, please come to the microphone, give your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes.
Seeing no one racing to the microphone, uh, I will declare the public hearing closed. Council. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Fricassi. Uh, in reading the uh, Planning Commission minutes uh, that were attached to our agenda, uh, there seems to be a lot of uh, discussion regarding um, what this would be, uh, the negatives of what would happen if this be permitted. And there's a lot of uh, items that were mentioned um, by the board. And, um, and one that struck me was the, um, there's no alcohol on the premise. And when I went and looked at this property today, I found that you know there's there's a like a break wall landscape between the alley and the parking lot in the back, and they've got a new uh, wooden high fence in the back. It looks like it was just built, but behind that fence is residential property, and to the south of this is is RM, which is also residential. Um, I don't I don't mind the dance studio. I am concerned about some of the things that were raised in the meeting of the Planning Commission. And um, for example, when you look at it, you know, if it's a dance studio, I don't see a changing room uh, where young people could go and they put in on costumes. I don't know what events mean. And it's kind of looked at as to what kind of uses the time that it's open till uh, late at night in a residential area uh, has concerned of mine. Uh, the purchasing of alcoholic beverages three doors to the north and sitting in the back parking lot. And uh, Mr. Administrator, somebody better get code over there in the back. I've got pictures of it and it's a disgrace, really. And uh, it's all garbage all over the place. And, and because of that break wall, you have an opportunity of people just sitting back there and, and having drinks and going into the event, if, especially if it's later. Because I really don't have any idea. It doesn't remind me of a dance uh, studio that my grandchildren go to. It reminds me of an entertainment center. And I just would like to know whether or not it's an entertainment center for 41 people or it's, or it's a dance studio where parents take their children and they sit there and are the 41 people counted? Are they the young people and then the parents who sit there and watch their young people dance during the day? I mean, 41 people is not a lot of people when you have a large class like they have at Lathrop, for example, at the City Hall. So I'm just talking about, you know, I go to some of these rehearsals and things, and 41 people is just almost nothing. You fill a room pretty quick. And, and, uh, and not only that, but, you know, there's Pepsi-Cola cases stacked up against the wall on the south wall where people climb over the fence, and, uh, and nothing has been corrected. And I'm just wondering... When it mentions uh, in the minutes about controls and who controls whether or not somebody comes to the door inebriated or has a drink with them or has been drinking, even though there's no drinking in the building, you know, what is permitted outside at night, what goes on. I just think that, that this is the wrong place for this kind of a use in that neighborhood. And I am mean, looking at all the concerns. Um, even the city planner uh, was uh, uh, looking at it, saying, again, there's a difference between the use that they may authorize and what the zoning permits. And uh, there's four or five items that, that they're trying to, to define which would offer more controls. Um, it's the four, four conditions that were, were recommended. Um, I, I, just, I just think that, that uh, and, and it's nothing against these individuals. I understand they had a dance studio before this, but they've never had one in a neighborhood shopping center, strip shopping center, where there's residential 
on two sides of it. And, uh, and that really bothers me because we're the ones who are gonna hear the noise at 12 o'clock at night or the horns or whatever music at night. If it was uh, different hours, I would have no opposition to it. But being there at 12 o'clock at night, I really don't think that that would create anything but pr trouble. What kind of hours are you consider, would you uh, consider? 10 to 10 is a reasonable time, I would think. When you get into midnight, then you're not going to, if you go at midnight, you're not going to just jump out of the door at midnight. You're going to hang around. You're going to get in the parking lot and converse, I mean, just like people do normally. So you're not out of that shopping strip till probably 1 o'clock. And I just think that it's a... It's kind of a quiet neighborhood. You have the Hope Church there, right at Kitty Corner. You know, I just uh, think that the choice of location is not appropriate. Through the chair. Yeah. Um, all hours are 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. with the exception of Friday and Saturdays. Is, is that something that um, the um, petitioners can live with? Is is a ten or eleven o'clock maximum for Friday and Saturday? Uh, if I may, um, I think we have businesses in there that close a little later than us. I can't hear, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. would you speak in the microphone? I please? think there are businesses there that may close a little later than us. There's a chicken uh, chicken place pizza place, uh, but we would take in consideration, we would consider 10 o'clock um, or 11. Yeah, our, uh, I think our noise ordinance is at 11. Well, th there's a noise ordinance that controls all, ish, you know, all businesses, but yes. since this is a special use, it is appropriate for council to, to set appropriate hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if, the, if Councilman Fricasi's concern is midnight, and I agree that there could be some loitering afterwards, um, and at least they're willing to possibly compromise at 11 p.m. for just Friday and Saturday as a compromise. Just ask the council maybe to consider that. You can make that as one of your conditions. I do, uh, we did have many concerns when we first started vetting this. Uh, I think the Planning Commission and the applicants um, have worked together to try to resolve those issues by <coughs> limiting um, number of people in there, by providing somebody at the door, um, by not allowing alcohol per right. There's always going to be policing issues. There's a liquor store right there. And some of the concerns that Mr. Fergazzi has is really the owner of the whole shopping center. And I think through this special use process, these issues have been discovered and there has been a resolution to try to mitigate these, these issues. You always have the right, if they violate, to revoke their special use if it becomes abusive. And, I, and, and maybe just as, as a compromise, maybe consider 11 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays when they, when they tend to do more business. I, I would ask you to address that mostly, I believe, it's adult dancing. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's more like an Arthur Murray's, not, not children classes per exactly. se. Exactly. We are not a children's dance studio. We are an adult ballroom dance studio. Uh, how much would it curb your program to uh, reduce the hours from midnight to 11 o'clock on Friday and Saturday? Well, uh, understanding Councilman Fakasi's, uh explanation that you know you don't leave right away so if we shut down at 11 and it's understood that maybe because we're not trying to go into the early mornings but if we close at 11 excuse my voice and you know take us to 12 to get out i don't think that'd be a big problem okay um i think that one of the things is that we have a history of uh other locations in in southfield that are uh it's not exactly like what you're proposing, but similar to what you're proposing, and it was in an area that was very was just adjacent to residential, 
and it took us probably three years, four years almost to get that sorted out to get it quieted down so that the, the residents felt comfortable with the with the establishment next door to them because uh, once they leave, uh, once once your patrons leave, uh, they you've really kind of lost control of of what happens. And by the time you hear the horns honking and get out there, you don't know who honked the horns, and 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 yet the next door neighbors don't really care. It was just somebody honking a horn, uh, or if there's loud talking, uh, which is what we experienced, um, and racing of engines. Uh, uh, we sat here and listened to uh, story after story of of that, and we tried every kind of way that we could to. Uh, ameliorate the, the, the problems, finally ended up that I think it changed the ownership and, and it finally got resolved, so they're doing fine now. So we don't want to start something if we can prevent it. So uh, if the 11 o'clock uh, cutoff time is workable for you, I would, I would recommend the council to include that in the, in the motion if, if we Take a motion on this. Uh, is there any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, yes. like one other thing. The, the, uh, the, the people who go there to, to dance, uh, would, they, would they have a, a, bring a partner with them? Would they, would they have a wife or a girlfriend or something with them? Or would they go there and pick up somebody to dance with? On our classes, I'm you can, really talking reality here. Go yes, ahead. on classes, it's open to the public. You could come by yourself, or you could, you could bring your partner or a significant other, or someone that's that wants to dance. On our um, celebrations, it's just like any other time. You would come. You may call a friend, meet the friend there. You may come by yourself, but we're we're mainly adult. We would dance studio and, and it's not um, even some of the um, planning commissioners they've been there themselves there is no noise issue there is you, you, you couldn't hear our noise if you sat in the parking lot uh, at, at the end of the parking lot in front of our house I mean in front of our business so there's not a real noise issue but we mainly deal with adults mainly seniors well, that question I asked is because we've had situations in the city where where fights have broke out because of situations, and and uh, and we've suffered under that as a city, and I just think that that um, you know I I just look at going and learning how to dance would be a couple going or friends going together and but. I I, uh, I I just have a real problem with with the policing of that kind of you know having an event and and it being an entertainment mecca. Then I have a problem. So I I, uh, I don't wish that on anybody have a problem, but I know that we've experienced several incidents in the city that have really rocked this city and hurt this city, and I just don't want that be happening, and, and I'd be for something that would encourage it. Now, you uh, you do have security people? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, just get good security people. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Brightwell. Yeah, I think this probably would come up uh, during a study session when, I, when the young lady was made a presentation a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and you mentioned that uh, from a sound standpoint, is and the decibel level, is there uh, a, the size of your music, is there a, a, the music, what uh, I, are you, is, you know, well, well, what assurance do you give us the music cannot be heard outside your door, uh, outside the door of your property? Is there a unique installation in there? No, it's just the sound level that, that you turn the sound level to. Okay. Um, the president of the planning commissioner has, has been in there. Okay. All right. Um, and most of your clients will be 
adult age clans. Yes. Okay. All right. Fine. Good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mandelbaum? Yes. In the, again, in the Planning Commission um, minutes, it's alluded to that there have been possible police issues in the area. Is that related to the, the general area with the liquor store and the other, or is it related to this particular business? This, um, this business has occupied the site since last October, and there was an incident that came to our attention about allegedly underage drinking. We can't attribute that, whether it's the party store, the parking lot, or the dance studio. And, and that, is, that is why subsequently um, they've had to come in and try to get retroactive approval. Mm -hmm. And we were very clear from the get-go about the alcohol, whether it's by sale or bring your own, that we, we yeah. you know, strongly recommended against it, and that would be one of our conditions, and they agreed to that. Another condition at the time was that uh, possibly they exceeded their maximum occupancy, Correct. and they agreed to limit that, and they put controls in to make sure that that didn't get exceeded. So um, maybe some of the naivete of moving in and signing a lease without getting the proper approvals and growing pains of the business came to light, which, you know, uh, here we are almost uh, nine or ten months later trying to get them officially approved with conditions that can be enforced. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a couple of questions. One is on the uh, Friday night and Saturday night when you have the entertainment portion, not the dance classes, because I would presume that the dance, you subscribe to the dance classes. You pay a fee to have a certain amount of lessons. You pay an entry fee, so we do have a drop-in rate, or you can purchase a package which will offer you the benefit of buying a group of lessons. Okay, but for the, the non-dance lesson time, the, the free time, the entertainment portion, is that pay at the door? Is that how you... Uh, well, as we stated, the open dance portion we have set for our future events to require pre-registration. Uh, should we consider it an event that could possibly grow outside of our capacity? Uh, if it's something that we know is, is a rather small um, dance session, then we would monitor the door uh, by having someone keep count of attendees and making sure that we stay within those constraints. Okay. Now... Every uh, business I, and every every location has to have two entrances or exits. Yes. Uh, you have a back door exit. Yes, we do. Uh, is that monitored? Will that be monitored so that someone can't uh, block the door open and let their friends in the back door? Correct. It's okay. um, it's not in a place that is, um, I would guess, easy to access in the sense of someone would be unnoticed if they stood there and, and held the door open. It's our second um, safety exit, so. Okay, um, it's primarily an exit door Correct. rather than, than an entrance door. Right. So people aren't coming in from both doors. No, you can't. Because you can quickly um, overrun the, the approved numbers by having people coming in both doors at the same time. No, you don't so, you don't okay. have access to our rear door from okay. the outside. Any, any other questions? I need a motion. Mr. Chair? Mr. Like Mandelbaum. To, I'd like to make a motion that we approve PSLU 17-0003 with the rec planner's recommended resolution with the addition of Friday and Saturday evening hours ending at 11 p.m. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Mandelbaum, supported by Mr. Brightwell, that we approve uh, uh, PSLU 17-0003, uh, special use, with the conditions as cited by Mr. Mandelbaum. Is there any further discussion? Are we prepared to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I oppose. Uh, let the record show that there's five yeas, one nay. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Okay.
You probably won't see me over there because I can't dance. <laughs> uh, we have the, the final uh, uh, public <clears throat> hearing. It's PSLU 17-0005. Yes, through the chair, um, PSLU 17-0005 is a special use request of Lindhout Associates Architects on behalf of the owner IXL Learning Center to use residential property for a playground associated with a uh, permitted use of the existing building for a child care center located at 15600 West 12 Mile Road. And I have a brief video. PSLU 17-0005 is a special use request of Lindout Associates Architects on behalf of the owner IXL Learning Center to permit a playground within the RA single family residential zoning designation. The property is located at 15600 West 12 Mile Road on the north side of 12 Mile Road between Marshall Street and Greenfield Road in section 12 of the city. The subject property is zoned B3 general business RA single family residential and P vehicular parking. The property to the north is zoned P vehicular parking. The property to the south across 12 mile road is zoned OS office service. The property to the east is zoned B3 general business. The property to the west is zoned OS office service. With regard to the existing land uses, the subject property is developed with a vacant office building. To the north is a masonry wall separating the property from residential homes fronting Marshall Street. To the south is parking for the subject property with 12 mile road beyond. To the east is the existing vacant office building proposed for daycare use. To the west is a portion of the parking lot and wood fence. The site contains 1.2 acres of land with 225 feet of frontage on 12 mile road and a depth of 257 feet. The special land use request is to permit a playground within the RA single family residential zoning district associated with a proposed child care learning center. Issues considered by the planning department during the review of the special use were special use standards and conditions of article five single family residential districts. Southfield comprehensive master plan noting local mixed use and residential use for these parcels and the petitioners to implement the recommendations made by the Southfield Police Department's Crime Prevention Bureau regarding site security. Um, the, the petitioner and the architect are here to make some opening statements. Again, I want to remind council that we're not approving the commercial daycare use that's already permitted. This is to use the uh, adjacent residential lot for tot lot. Okay. Hi. It's nice to Would see you. Would you give your here. name and uh, business address for the record? The business please. address? Okay. Uh, Jennifer Moss. It's The business address is 15600 uh, 12 Mile Road, Southfield. I don't know the zip code yet by heart. I probably should learn that. <laughs> <laughs> that might be helpful. Um, and this is uh, Lindsay, who is my partner. She currently runs our Birmingham location, which is three miles away. And she will be running the, the, the facility uh, if approved uh, in Southfield. So everyone's here really late, so I'm gonna tr try and be really brief. Um, we met before and you kind of already know my history a little bit, so I won't waste too much time going back on that. Um, what I would like to speak to a little bit about is the demand. Um, we, we, are, we have a location that's three miles away at 14 in Woodward. So normally it's probably not normal business practice to locate one so close. But we've been looking for four years because of the high demand of the area and the amount of people that we turn away. Um, I guess I'll just do it. So Lindsay fields those calls almost every day. Um, we have a 150 family wait list currently at our Birmingham location. And we already have nine families signed up for Berkeley. And we, we haven't done any advertising. We haven't told anybody anything about it whatsoever. They've already put actual money down. Um, uh, what else was I going to say about that? 
I, th I think um, in terms of the need, I get uh, people who will email me a weekly picture of their newborn, showing me how cute they are, trying to make space. People will try and uh, jokingly give us cash offers to make space for them in our facility. So our hope is just really to create a space where we can um, say yes to these families that need this care, as opposed to having to add them to a long list of current families. Yeah. The other thing is, is you have the closing of the Beaumont facility that created even more of a need. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, so we know there's a need. I'll move on from that. Um, our hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, we are not open evenings. We're not open weekends. Uh, I have a sample. I brought a sample schedule down. So really the, the hours that the playground would be used are from 9.30 to 11.30, and then children go in for nap and... Uh, lunch and everything, and then from three to six. So of the day, uh, it would be the playground would be use, in use for five hours, and it wouldn't be all the children. You can see from our schedules that you know we we stagger them, and so a, a classroom, a couple classrooms might go out and be out for like 45 minutes in the morning and, and in the evening. So it's not like there's 100 kids on the playground or anything like that. So we are a um, we're very high quality. We are a structured play-based program. Uh, I'd also like to address the fact of, of privacy. We would be more than happy when we construct the playground, and most likely in the spring, we can, we can either put up a new arborvitaes or whatever, or we can remove the fence and put a privacy fence. So whatever is more suitable to uh, the council. Um, I also, you guys are well versed in what you do. And you know the need for childcare in the facility in in the planning of a of a city, so that's really what we're trying to do here. Um, I also want to mention that, as far as being an employer, we try very hard to to be really good stewards of employership. Uh, in the last year alone, we've uh, since we've been able to to get bigger. You know, we have five other locations. We began offering four hundred one k. Uh, health plans, and most recently we did a increase to our families, and and the, all of the uh, proceeds or all of the tuition went to our teachers. So the teachers on May first all got across the board a 15% raise. So we're very we're very considerate. We try very hard to be a flexible, good place to work as well. So we think we bring that to the community as well. Did I forget anything? Oh, Lindsay. Oh, uh, yes, I am um, current director of Birmingham, and I, um, my experience is that I have a degree in elementary education. Okay. <coughs> Any questions, or is this not question time? Uh, well, not from us. Okay. Uh, if you take a seat there, uh, this is a public <laughs> hearing. If anyone would like to uh, speak, come to the microphone, give your name and address. For the record, and you have three minutes. Yes, hello, good evening. My name is Jehan Youssef. I live in uh, 1596 uh, Marshall Street, uh, 29, sorry, 2906 uh, Marshall Street, which is right next my property, right next to the daycare center. So um, I get small uh, chance to talk to the owners and these uh, ladies outside and we talk about um, some uh, small issue I have. I have some um, senior citizen live with me and I also work in medical field and my brother work at night shift. So we need to have some kind of relax at home or sleep property. So what happened is uh, we talk about the hours and all. So seems like most of the day the kids going to be outside. The only concern I have about is the noise and all this. They said they're going to be able to control the noise. But there is no way because kids, when they go outside, there is no way you can control them. And um, so I'm worried about that part. They talk about the privacy also, which is, I like the idea they have about that privacy. But the most important thing for me is I need to relax in my home and we need to sleep properly. So they said they're going to be able to work on that. But <clears throat> I, I don't think so because kids, it's kids. When they go outside, there is no way you can control them. 
So the only concern I have about is the noise, it, which is this. They also say something about 40 kids at least, they're gonna be outside in daytime. And especially, like I said, the schedule they have, it's fully, um, almost um, the whole day the kids outside. So. Okay. Anything else? Um, no. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that wishes to come to the microphone, give your name and address for the record? Uh, Nahil Calabat. I'm the property owner. She's my tenant, Ms. Jihan Youssef, so it's 29068 Marshall Street, which is uh, directly next door to where the proposal for the playground is. Noise is a big concern to us, obviously. Uh, privacy is another concern. I need something where I know that it, there's going to be some sort of a fence or something where there's you know total privacy on our part. Um, as far as potential, you know, future tenants or if we actually decide to sell the property at some point, I need to have that peace of mind knowing that I don't want 40 kids or whatever the class is yelling and screaming and that's inconvenient to the uh, current resident as far as, like I said, if, uh, in case we decide to sell to a future, uh, the owner. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to take anything away from the value of the house, uh, uh, you know, having that next door to, like that. That's a possibility as well. Um, so between that, the privacy and the noise, those are the biggest two concerns we have. And that's all I have to say, really. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Come to the microphone. Give your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Uh, Mallory Sharp, uh, 2482 Oakshire Avenue, Berkeley, Michigan. Um, I'm currently pregnant. We're due in a few weeks, and we're actually a family that did sign up for the IXL new location. Um, this is, uh, it was a very hard search to find a daycare um, that had, it would offer part-time like we need. Uh, so this was a huge, huge win when we got in at this location because we did tour the Birmingham location, and unfortunately, the wait list was so long that um, when the new location came up, we thought that would be a great opportunity for our growing new family. Uh, so this is really important to us, and it's also important that um, when he's old enough that he'll be able to play outside um, and get that fresh air. That's really important. So thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Give your... Name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Uh, my name is Doug Labity. I'm at 2866 Oakshire Avenue in Berkeley, Michigan as well. I just want to piggyback on the previous uh, speakers. Uh, my wife is currently pregnant due in December, and we toured the, the Birmingham location for IXL, and it's a very high quality facility. Um, they have a lot of th good things going on there, so I can only imagine that uh, the location in Southfield would add value to any um, residential or other commercial use around it. And uh, I'm in very much in support of the location. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Elaine Yaffe, 16960 George Washington, Southfield, Michigan, 48075. I have a question for them. Do I? You know, you ask the question and we'll have okay. them come answer it, yeah. Okay, my question is that um, your other locations, I'm not familiar with them. Are they also located in a residential or near a residential um, area? And have you had any problems with um, the residents that live in around those other areas? Now do I? Yeah, you want to? Um, actually, our Birmingham location is uh, in a, we're in a church, which is located in a neighborhood. So. It's never been a problem that Could I know. Do children of. go outside to play? Oh yeah, yeah. We have a huge playground there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Seeing no one else, I will declare the public hearing closed. Council. One one question. Um, with all the construction, you had applicants that are speakers that came up that said that they plan to send their uh, soon to be children to the center. How long will it take from once you have you started construction? What's 
when do you plan to open this location? Well, we all know that construction takes longer than anticipated, so, you know, but we were hoping for January 1st. It really depends on what happens here, and um, I guess that's really, we were hoping for January 1st. Okay. And then I know one of the speakers had a question about some of the screening or the fencing, and I know that it was, we have pictures and it was talked about, but if you can just, for the speaker and the, who had the concern, if you don't mind. You mean talk about the fencing? But from the playground to the uh, resident next door. Oh. Did you want to answer? Yes. I'm Dave Richardson from Lindhout Architects, 10465 Citation Drive in Brighton. And uh, there is an existing fence and existing pine trees on that line. Our, part of our plan was to improve those and uh, replace any damaged or not trimmed pine trees. Um, but now hearing the concerns of the neighbor, uh, I, I talked to Jennifer and it's, she's willing to stipulate that that fence be upgraded to an eight foot privacy fence <clears throat> in addition to the pine trees. So hopefully that helps the neighbor situation in, in addition to what the hours that she discussed where it's limited because to control, not, uh, control is the right word, but to have all those kids, there's only so much time they could spend on the playground. And for the chair. Yeah, we only allow six foot fences. That's what I was just going to say. Oh, okay. They, they, they can seek a waiver to go higher, and we have had cases um, that 12 and South, Southfield Road where an eight foot wall was actually constructed. Um, but I heard the applicant say they're willing to upgrade the fence and put arborvitaes, and we can, we can administratively uh, review the, the proposed upgrade of the fencing. Um, they do have decorative wrought iron, I think, for the rest of the site, but adjacent to the neighbor, we could come up with a nice quality residential fence that will help attenuate any noise issues and, and then having additional planting. There is a, a large kind of overgrown hedge there, and the trade-off is you're going to, if, if you want to put a fence in, you're going to lose some of that hedge in order to put that fence in. We had a similar situation next to Vibe where a number of trees had to come down in order to put put the fencing and new landscaping. But between the hours of operation, the fact that these um, there's always going to be uh, adult um, daycare workers there, the limited hours, and the additional screening, I think we can address the noise issue. Well, I'm, I'm sensitive to the neighbors uh, with their concerns about noise, but I'm also sensitive to children and children need an opportunity to to express themselves uh, if we curb the the children from laughing and having good a good time uh, then we need a lot we'll probably need a lot more psychologists <laughs> I thought you were really going there I was like um I'm not sure <laughs> yeah uh, to figure for out a second. what went wrong so uh, but we'll Make a decision here, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Fricassi. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that area, and uh, this building has been vacant for quite a while. And it's great that it's being used and used for this purpose. Um, you know, as far as the noise, you know, we approve daycare in residential neighborhoods, and nobody says you know the noise factor is a problem when they can have up to 12 children in. And they were running around the backyard. So I just um, think that um, the change that the architect has offered is is good. And I don't think you need an eight foot high wall. I think six with everybody would take away the sound. But uh, that's my opinion. But I'm also for this. <clears throat> Mr. Brightwell. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, will the, the western part uh, the western fence, uh, will that still remain wrought iron or will you put some uh, landscaping there? What, what, what's with the proposal? With that? Is, is that the one that's on the street side? Yeah. Yeah, we can make it privacy all the way around. Yeah, but. Is that the, what you're asking? The, yes. Um, but it's, it's a question. But the police, we would want to talk to the police department because experience on other properties says they want to see, they want to see from Marshall also if there's any problem. Okay. So we want to address the north side, but we don't think we want to go privacy on the Marshall side. 
so that the police have a chance to see through the play lot. Okay. Well, well, whatever is appropriate from a crime prevention standpoint, uh, but from a landscaping standpoint, uh, architectural standpoint, are there certain shrubbery and or wood or something that is more conducive to buffering sound? The, the arborvitae would, uh, the arborvitae would uh, do that. Arborvitae or evergreen that's going to stay so that, that throughout the year. Buffering yes. For sound? I'm, I'm, I'm too In addition concerned. to the fence. Okay. And, well, I'm obviously concerned about, we, we had the residents here and they were concerned about noise. And I know we've uh, approved several daycare home uh, daycares uh, since I've been on board. Uh, and I understand the, uh, the need uh, based on a prior daycare person here. She was also mentioned that Beaumont closing also obviously created a, a big need for them. Uh, but the shrubbery and or fence, am I being told, and, and plus with the, with the opening for crime prevention, that this will be a buffer of basic noise? You know, just realize I've been around kids and I understand when they are active, they are active. So that's what I don't I'm have any I, noise as far as noise is concerned. I'm I, I wouldn't be an expert in it. I would right. I think defer to Terry more. You'd probably know a little bit more. But I would guess you're bouncing off of something else, right? Well, um, pardon. Chain link. Oh well, in Birmingham, all we have is chain link, and the neighbors don't seem to be bothered by it. We don't have any privacy or any shrubs or anything around it. Okay, you you have residents nearby. Yep, mm -hmm. across homes. the street, like right there. Um, okay, well, I'm, am, am I being assured that what they are going to do with, with fencing and shrubbery that will buffer the, the, the obvious natural sound that's coming? It, it definitely right? will help. And um, if you could make that one of the conditions, <coughs> you can administratively approve the fence and the arborvitae hedge. Okay, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Nothing's going to drown it all out, but a no. uh, uh, little bit will help. Is there any other comment from council? I need a motion. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Fercasi. Mr. Chairman, I move that um, PSLU 117-0005 be approved. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Fercasi, supported by Mr. Cruz, that we approve PSLU 17-0005. Is there any further discussion? Are we prepared to vote? Is a friendly amendment to to include the, the additional include the, fence and the, the arborvitae hedge, including the fence and the arborvitae. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. It is carried. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have no site plan this for this evening. We do have a large number of people that have asked for communications. Uh, uh, the first person is Mary Ann Burt. If you'll come to the microphone, give your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. I uh, don't see any. Anyone coming? Uh, <laughs> second person is Gregory Keeler. If you come to the microphone, give your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Greg Keeler, 25170 Circle Drive, Southfield, Michigan. In 2011, sewer line was supposed to be installed on Circle Drive. The equipment had been dropped off and everything, and then a month later it was removed. So there is no sewer line placed there. Six years later now, you have sent out a letter to us that if your system fails, you have to connect to the public sanitation system. What sanitation system? We have no sanitation system. How do we connect to a sanitation system according to section 21? Zero four and 2105 of the city um, code. There, there was a letter sent out in April that said you um, had to connect up to it. To this date, there is no sanitation line out there. There is no 
any any indication that there is any line that will be placed out there. This action has disabled the residents of Southfield from retiring in their homes, like some of the leaderships I know here that wants to retire in their homes. We can't retire in our homes if our systems do fail. We have to move. Lawrence Tech has knocked down four homes on Circle Drive because their systems fail. There is no adjust, there is no safety net, there is nothing there set aside that you can tap into the system. So I would like to know, will we be able to live in peace in our neighborhoods? Will there be something done to put forward to, we can live there happily? I know me and the mayor have talked about this beforehand and I warned him, I said, I put the letter in and I will be coming in front of the board and talking about that. So this was put down as an immediate action to happen for all the residents to do this, but there has been no immediacy for the city spark to make anything for us to be able to connect to our sewer system. And then as far as what I heard what you saying with one of the companies that was coming here as far as the noise and level for the city people, the residents of Southfield, six years ago, I complained to the people there on council. Then at that time, the noise and problems we were having with Lawrence Tech and the parties and everything else. And we still had them. I told them it was going to get worse, and it did. Last week, after 11 o'clock, since that's your curfew time, 1 o'clock. A couple of times I have called the police and told them. I said, no, come over. They'll flag you down as to go to parking where the party is at. So there is noise there for us and everything else. So as you nick picking all these things, think about it also for us residents there. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, the next person is Elaine Yaff. Yaffe. Yaffe? Yes. If you give her name and address for the record, you have three minutes. Yep, one second. Elaine Yaffe, 16960 George Washington Street, actually Drive, Southfield, Michigan, 48075. I've lived in my house in Southfield on George Washington Drive since I was 12 years old. That comes out to 52 years. I'll let you do the math. The city of Southfield has gone through its ups and downs, and I've lived through them all. And here are some questions and concerns that I have, and I hope that the council can answer them and to please look into them. I realize that there must be a street cleaning schedule, and if there is one, is it posted on your website? Here is what I experienced. Just this past Thursday, I was um, the garbage and recycle pickup day. I was driving behind the street cleaning truck through the detour route to get to Ten Mile Road, and he was driving around aimlessly. Why? Because he couldn't do his job due to the fact that the garbage cans and garbage bags were on the street. Excuse me, on the street. I found this a complete waste of gas and pollution to the environment for absolutely no reason. Shouldn't there be a coordinated effort between the street cleaning and the garbage collection day? That is a question I have for the council as number one. I also tried to find the end date for the 10 Mile Road project. I'm sure it's somewhere on your website. Um, many people in the neighborhood have told me that it's supposed to end um, at the end of August. I find that hard to believe. Um, if there is one, I'd like to know where I can find that. I have pictures here that I would like to share with the, with the um, council um, of Pierce, south of Ten Mile Road, and what it looks like after a short rainfall. I'm sure that when I go home tonight, I'm going to find a lovely pool. Um, this is a despicable, um, um, uh, uh, despicable situation. Um, how many of the council members have actually taken a drive through that neighborhood while we've gone through this construction? construction for over a year. Um, whoever was hired to install the grass in the areas that were dug up for the sewers, they did a horrible haphazard job. I have pictures of that also where you could see the sidewalk has um, debris of, of, of uh, dirt on it as well as the street. Um, there's also no detour signs posted south of Pierce. And so we've had already two cars that had to be um, removed by a neighbor by, with his Jeep because they went into, the, into that area. A woman stopped me as I was driving the, 
uh, as I was walking my dogs because she didn't know how to get out of the area because there were no signage. I would also like to know if the council members are aware of the street signs and other debris that's lying all over in the city's right of way as well as in the streets. This is a hazard. And if you drive in that area, you will see that. Also on my city of Southfield Water and Sewer Department invoice, there's something that says a charge for street light district charge. Could someone please tell me what this is for? Because on August 9th, I contacted Your DTE. Up. Your time is up. You've given up. If you will take your list and give it, give it to the city clerk, she'll give it to the city administrator. If, if you have it listed, if you have it listed. I don't have a listing. I only have. But you have only three minutes. Right. So what should I do now? Then if you have a, if you have I a have list. I have to write a list now? If you could. Okay. So we'll know what all the, the problems are. Okay. Thank you. The next person is uh, Mr. Keith Harris. If you have a, give your address for the record, please. My P.O. Box number, All Race and Life Matter, is um, 2769 Southfield, Michigan, 48037. I'm here on the behalf of our organization and our community, um, Detroit uh, Eviction Coalition, Moratorium Now. Um, we're asking you to create a moratorium to stop Ordinance 1571. Um, understand this, our septic tanks are not an environmental problem. If they were an environmental problem, back when you had the ordinance in 1998, Ordinance 1433, that gave you 18 years to fix this problem. Why did you wait? And to all these new homeowners bought these houses to enforce, to create a new ordinance in, um, in, in 2009. And then you enforced that ordinance in 2016. Now, come on now. Come on. People are losing their homes. And um, we, can't, we can't do this. We can't do this to our residents. I mean, we got people, young, young families over here, older families like myself. And this ordinance is a setup for failure, asking us to borrow money that you know we can't pay back, anywhere between twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars, and then contractors who cannot be honest, inspectors who are lying and actually fraudulently lying on their inspection sheets by not saying our homes is uh, 200 feet away from the street. My home is every, 280 feet away from the street, but the inspector put less than 200 feet on there. Why? I paid them $300 to lie? Come on, this is only gonna get worse. And I'm asking you people to stop this right now. Think about it, no more, no more inspections, no more, um, um, enforcing this ordinance until you see it a little bit further. It's got to be thought about a little bit better. And I think Tanya Morrison, I mean, Ms. Morrison, didn't you say you were an engineer? Are you an engineer? So I'm wondering. And then, Dan, I heard you say you're the numbers man. So put the numbers together. That's all I'm asking. Where do we get the money? You, you know, this is a shakedown for the community. And you all know this. You in debt. Didn't I just hear you say you're trying to pay a water bill back for Northland? And you, cr you cut a deal. Now cut us one by cutting it out. Okay? Thank you. And I'd like to leave you something here in case you want to know more about our organization. The next person is Mr. Gerard Mullen. No, please, please, no demonstrations. Good evening. My name is Gerard Mullen, Southfield Citizens Oversight Committee, Post Office Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 48037. Mr. Chairman, Last June 19th, at a council study session, this council voted on a proposed charter amendment, an amendment designed to take power from the voters and give it to the city administrator. That is, convert the elected offices of the city treasurer and of the city clerk into appointed staff positions <clears throat> under the control 
of the city administrator. On the surface, the amendment failed on June 19th. But did it really fail? I don't think so. Let's take a closer look. Prior to the vote, the chair stated that the amendment must pass by a three-fifths vote. The chair was correct about this. Section 11.18 of the charter mandates this. But I say that this amendment didn't fail. Here's why. Let's do the math together. The chair stated, the, excuse me, the chair started to poll the council. First Councilman Cruz voted no, and then Councilwoman Morris voted no. And then at that time, the chair stated it wasn't necessary to go further. The amendment had failed. But did it really fail? I say it didn't, and here's why. There was a quorum of six council persons at that time. Councilwoman Seymour wasn't present. Two no votes leaves the possibility that the remaining four council persons could have voted yes, making the vote four to two, which is two thirds or 66 and two thirds percent, whereas three fifths equals 60%. 66 and two thirds percent is greater than 60%. Do the math. The amendment would have passed if the remaining four council persons had voted yes, but they weren't polled by the chair. I'm surprised that no one here at this council didn't catch this error. What is troubling to me is this. If you folks can't do fifth grade math, how can you possibly manage Northland? I think you folks should stick to the basics, like governing and not trying to manage commercial property. Thank you. The next person is Stacy Jackson. If you'd come to the microphone, give your name and address for the record, you have three minutes. Stacy Jackson. 21685 Rougewood Drive, Southfield, Michigan, 48033. I am here to echo the sentiments of all the residents behind me um, in objection to Ordinance 1571. Quite frankly, I am here to assert that the city of Southfield has been executing selective application of a universal city ordinance known as 1571. I am here to claim and assert that the city of Southfield has failed to notify, apply, and enforce Ordinance 1571 to all homeowners with septic tanks from 8 Mile to 12 Mile, Greenfield to Inkster. Every homeowner with a septic tank should have received a letter at the exact same time to enforce this ordinance. I fear they have not. That is an unlawful action and selective. That is much like in the beginning of the session, us singling out Councilwoman Morris for a septic because she is a woman, but not targeting the rest of you because you're men with a septic. It is unlawful. I am here to assert that the city allowed previous homeowners to go decades without this ordinance being applied to them. In fact, one resident supplied us with an or a letter that came from the city of Southfield, which states, and I'll be very quickly, the purpose of this letter is to advise the members of the Beechwood Acres Subdivision Association Board and you, the current Southfield City Council fully supports the commitment that the prior City Council made to the residents of the community regarding this sanitary sewer project. It goes on to state, quote, the changes are that the residents are not automatically forced to put in a sewer. If a septic system is functioning properly, then nothing has to be done. If in three years the system is checked and it is okay, you still do not have to do anything. If the system is checked and it is not okay, then it is the responsibility of the resident to decide what they are going to do. The city is not going to tell you that you have to tap into the sewer system. You will have the option of fixing your system, moving it to your site, or tapping in. They have an alternative now, so that if their septic system fails and they cannot be fixed, they will have the option to tap in. It goes on, because I noticed the time is going. Further states, we are doing the best we can to provide, to prepare the site down the road if and when it needs. The cost will not occur now and will only occur when and if there is a failed system and the owner chooses to tap in because there is no other choice, end quote. 
It further states, stated in the same manner, administratively, the property owner, resident, will not be required to hook up to the sanitary sewer system if there is another acceptable solution to the problem. If a failed septic system can be rebuilt, it may be rebuilt even if it costs more than it would to connect to the sewer system. The final decision is left to the property owner." End quote. That comes directly from a previous city administrator. With that being Time is said- up. Thank okay. you. You're very welcome. No demonstrations, please, or I'll ask you to leave. No demonstrations, or I'll ask you to leave. Please. The next person is Walter uh, Meisen. You give your name and a record. And Hello, name my and name is Walter for the record. Meisen. You have three minutes. I live at 22030 Rougewood and uh, in the beautiful uh, Beechwood Acres Homeowners Association area. Uh, we live on the banks of the Rouge River. Our water levels are very high. We have some unique problems. Uh, one in particular, I would invite all of you to go down Beach Road, turn on to Rougewood, and the second house on your left, you'll see the mess that's been made of their front lawn. Uh, this has cost, uh, charged them uh, at least $55,000 so far. He's still not hooked up to the uh, city sewer, and he can't move into his property. <clears throat> I would like for you to take a look at that. Drive by and see the kind of mess that has resulted. Now, our problems are not as bad as those in, uh, in Texas right now, but I'll tell you, we are also in danger of losing our homes, and we're concerned about this just as much as those in Texas. We wish that you would put a moratorium on this ordinance until solutions can be found to fix the problems. And we'd like very much, as our elected officials, if you look into this matter and see what you can do about rectifying the situation that is not solvable by us. We cannot find contractors to do the work that you're insisting that we have done. Uh, we're being taken to court. We're give, being given notices to vacate our properties because they're not uh, legal with our septic systems. Uh, you'll be hearing from more people from the uh, subdivision that have got unique problems that you'll that, that they'll address at that time. Thank you. The next person is Diane Thomas. No, <laughs> turn over the page. The next person is McNeil Jones, Jr. The next person is Stacy Dick. If you give your name and address for the record, you have three minutes. Good evening, my name is Stacy Dick, 21770 Maplewood Drive. I'm here to discuss Ordinance 1571. I am the past president of the Beechwood Acres Homeowners Association, which consists of 144 homes. Many of us are here today. I am appalled at the way Ordinance 1571 has been forced and enforced with residents of the Beechwood Acres Homeowners Association placing stickers on family homes stating that their home is condemned because they have not hooked up to the city sewer, calling residents to come before the Water Board Commission every month because they have not hooked up to the city sewer has been a very, very stressful and threatening situation. The residence that I have next to me has been before the commission on a monthly basis. As many of the residents will be telling you today, we need you to look at Ordinance 1571 and put a moratorium on the whole process until we can come together as a community and come up with a creative solution that will address the unique needs of Beechwood Acres. Forcing people, 
Threatening people is not what leadership does. Leadership works together by example, not by threats. My name is Shayla Glass. I live at 22205 Maplewood. As Stacy stated, I've been in court multiple times for this over the past year. Um, I have been bullied into tying in to the point where there is a consent order mandating that I have to be tied in by September 25th. Now, we had a meeting with uh, city officials a couple weeks ago where I was told, you don't have to worry about that. We're going to get this sorted out, and then we'll get back to you. I sent an email to follow up the following day, and I was sent another consent order with a different date on it. We're getting different information. Nothing is consistent from city officials all the way to contractors who are supposed to be doing this work. I've gotten multiple bids. None of them are consistent. I've talked to companies who have done work in the neighborhood who don't want to touch our properties. My septic tank sits below the sewer line, so gravity would be an issue. I would have to put a pump in my home to pump waste up and out. We have power outages on a regular basis, so when the power is out like it was in March, where I was without power for six days, I would have waste sitting in my home. I would not be able to use my facilities, and I think that's a concern. Another concern I have is the inspectors coming out and intentionally damaging pipes in our septic systems. That's an issue. Thank you. We are going to continue to come before you in this manner and other manners. We are not going to stop and we need your assistance, please. And we want to do this peacefully as a community should with your assistance. Thank you. The next person is Tanya Stovall. The next person is Toby Rhodes. Give your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Toby Rhodes, 17001 New Jersey, Southfield, Michigan, 248-569-7189. Uh, and I want to let every black person in Southfield know that there's a clear color line with the city of Southfield. They're specifically targeting black people they target me with the police, they're targeting you with your homes, they target you using the city attorney, code enforcement, but they want to take your property. You got to look at the, the economy of Southfield. The, the economy's been declining for at least five years, and more and more of our tax dollars are going toward the police. The city of Southfield, to make up for the, the shortfall that they anticipate coming, they're going to have to steal your properties. And one of the scams they're using is the uh, septic tank scam, because there's no legitimate reason for doing it. I'm connected to the sewer system in the city of Southfield. In August 12, 2014, they backed up sewage, raw sewage, into my basement, causing thousands, millions of dollars in the whole community. And they didn't pay not one single dime to anybody in the neighborhood for all the damage they caused. Now they're t coming to you and saying that you got to fix your septic tank. It's just a scam to, to get you into debt, get a lien on your property, and then take your home. And they're specifically targeting black people. Because in the last uh, 10, 15 years, the population of Southfield has gone from uh, majority non-black to majority black. And that scares these people who aren't black. I mean, if you, if you don't believe me, look at the police department. They don't hire black people. Look at the city administrator, not black. City planner, not black. City attorney, not black. In a lot of cases, these people don't even live in Southfield. Yet they'll come into your community and tell you what to do as if they have any authority to do so. They can't vote. They can't serve on a jury. They don't pay any taxes. I would recommend to everyone who has these, these problems, every black person, to just go to court. Go in front of a judge. Tell them what the city of, uh, city of Southfield is doing to you. Tell them the, the, the history that the city of Southfield has not followed up any, any, any things that they said they were going uh, to do with the septic tanks. They didn't notify anybody. They didn't contact anybody. They waited six years. I mean, it shows that they weren't really serious about so-called health issues. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, the city attorney came into that meeting, don't have no background in health care, no background in, in, in the medical field, and she's going to talk about health issues, not providing any provo uh, uh, reports, any evidence. I mean, that's ridiculous, which shows you she's not giving you the real reason. The city of South is not giving the re real reason. The city of South is not going to work with you. They're not going to help you. you got to go to court. you got to get in front of a judge. you got to present your evidence and let the judge decide whether or not the city of, of Southfield has any authority to proceed, because an ordinance is not a law. 
That's just what the city of Southfield chooses to do. It has to be tested in court. And the only way that happens is you got to get in front of a judge and you got to present your case. Because otherwise, the city of Southfield is going to be like, well, we, you didn't go to court, so we're going to do whatever we want. You got to go to court. If you need help, come get me. I'll go to court with you. The next person is Ms. Pamela Gerald. You rename an address for the record, and you have three minutes. Mr. Chairman, due to the fact that my wife, Pamela Gerald, had throat surgery last week, I, Gerard Mullen, will tonight read my wife's words. Here goes. I'd like to thank the following Parks and Recreation staff members for the wonderful job they did at the 2017 Gazebo Concert Series. Those employees are Dave Duchesne, Catherine, Stephanie, and Gary Brewer. First of all, all of the concerts started on time, which is very important to me and to the audience. Secondly, the selected bands were perfect for this year's concert series. And also, there was a good variety of music. And finally, the bands were very interactive with the crowd. The music was so awesome that we started a tradition of dancing on the paver at the Berg. All the bands appreciated the audience participation and acknowledged the new Berg dancers. We have walkers at the pavilion. Now we have dancers at the Berg. The Gazebo Concert Series united a very diverse audience made up of different races and different ages, all united in dancing to the music. At the last concert of the series, we even had a 80-year-old man, a visitor from Germany, who danced continuously for an hour and a half with various women. What was most notable was the German man would come to your seat and ask you to dance and then walk you back to the chair. A true gentleman. Most of the audience attended all seven concerts, each Tuesday evening at 7, from, 11 through, from July 11th through to August 22nd, and then attended the senior day on Wednesday, August 23rd. Again, thank you to the PNR staff, Dave Duchesne, Catherine, Stephanie, and Gary Brewer for their hard work in making this concert series a huge success. And again, thank you. Oh, one last thing. At the end of Evergreen Week, last week, the celebration on Evergreen was a big, Success. Thank you. The next uh, person is Michael Collins. Can you give your name and address for the record? You have three minutes. Michael Collins, 22322 Maplewood Drive, Southfield 48033. I also have comments on Ordinance 1571 regarding houses with septic systems. The way I read Section 2104 of Ordinance 1571, a septic system that passes is permitted. It says it has to be reinspected every three years. I think it's implied that if it needs maintenance, it's allowed. But the wording is not clear, I don't think. I would request that the wording be made clear that repair and maintenance of a septic tank system which passes <clears throat> is permitted. Thank you. The next uh, request is for Hiram and Erica Cade. Do you your name and address for the record? You're going to split three minutes. Yes, we are. 
Um, good evening, um, Mayor and Council President. My name is Erica Cade. I live at 22175 Maplewood Drive, Southfield 48033. <clears throat> uh, my husband and I, Hiram, um, we have unique circumstances that Stacy Dick and Walter Meissen um, um, touched on. Um, we also live across the street. I'll let my husband talk. We live across the street from the Sherwins, 22220 Maplewood. Their home is a little bit less um, closer to the street than our house is. So they, they, could, they hooked up and they hooked up, I don't know how many years ago. Um, but they're our neighbors, they're good friends, but we are more than 200 feet. I'll let you talk. Good evening. My name is Hiram. Uh, I live at 22175 Maplewood Drive. Uh, we've got a unique circumstance in it that our house not only is on a hillside, but our septic system exits to the back of the house. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes it almost impossible to flow up a hill and around to the front of the house since we're 240 feet away from the city sewer system. Uh, we're thinking that 1571 really doesn't apply to us. I mean, it's, it, it, it applies to us, but it doesn't. It, in, in regards that it's too long of a run, we've got to defeat gravity in order to flow sewage uphill mm -hmm. to hook to the city sewer system. We just don't see that being doable. I mean, gravity works every time, you know, whether we like it or not, it works every time. Uh, we just think that there needs to be a moratorium on 1571 until some kind of positive thought can be made to, for it to fit all, instead of just fitting a few people, mm -hmm. fit everybody, you know, especially our situation. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> our septic is in the back. And from section 2.101, it says, building sewer shall mean the extension from the building drain to the public sewer or other place of disposal. Our septic is in the back. We have a walkout. We have a bathroom in the basement. We have a well in our front yard. We're on an acre and we're pushed back from the street. So we're asking for a permit for, to fix our septic tank. And that's all we want, just to fix it. We don't want to hook up to the sewer. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The next person is uh, William Sims, Jr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm here on behalf of my neighbors and Beechwood Acres. I had an inspection last year and my property passed. Of course, I'm almost 300 feet from the uh, ho sewer hookup, but my septic is in the back, my field is in the back of my house. But people ask for a moratorium on 1571, and I agree with that. Now, we have young families out there um, in Beechwood Acres that might not have um, the kind of resources that some of us older uh, residents might have. But if we're only going to talk about loan for property to fix it, if we're only going to talk about uh, compliance, that is not the answer for homeowners. I don't have a problem, except I have neighbors that have a problem, and we need 
time for you to take a look at it and see what can be done. Now, understand, we talk about health problems. I'll tell you, there is grants from the Department of Health for problems that I heard in our last meeting that is happening in that area. And if that's the case, anybody can go online and find out what Department of Health says about that. Nobody's talking about grants. Nobody's talking about helping these residents, residents out here. And that is something that needs to be taken into account. I want to tell you something. I'm a 30-year Marine retiree, 15-year educator here in the state of Michigan. And I'm going to tell you, I've been places that I've seen the health department fix these lines, take care of people that have the kind of problem that my neighbors have now. Thank you very much. Next item on our agenda, uh, before I go to the next item, uh, Mr. Administrator, uh, you've heard the concerns of the people that have come to the microphone. Um, can you have an answer uh, 30 days? Can I give you 30 days to uh, come up with a, uh, some kind of an answer that after you study the situation to see if there's a, a way to ameliorate the, the problem to the point where uh, it's acceptable? We will report back to council within 30 days. Uh, and please keep in mind that the stakeholders uh, need to have some some input to the solution. Okay? And if you want me to be involved in it, I'm right. more than happy to be involved in it. Okay? Um, the next item on our agenda is the council portion, and we have an approval for a travel expense for... Uh, Councilman Fakasi. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve Mr. Fakasi's travel expense to the Henry Ford Museum, Dearborn, Michigan. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Brightwell, supported by Mr. Mandelbaum, that we approve the travel expense for Councilman Fakasi. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It is carried. Uh, is there anything else? Mr. The Council, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Fakasi. Uh, to the administrator, uh, near the the um, facility that we approved tonight for the children nursery on 12 Mile Road, just to the uh, east of that, there's a um, there's a building that is housing smokers only. Uh, VAPE and smoking accessories. And it's got bars on the window. I don't know what's going on in that place, but we do not, I mean, even on the doors, there are, um, I mean, it's, you know, look at that. that Where's it's that? just, it's on 12 Mile Road, just, uh, east of, just east of, of Greenfield Road. I, and we call. don't have anything like that in the city. East of Greenfield? I guess i got to get used to this. West of, of Greenfield. Uh, and we don't have anything like that in the city. Uh, and I don't know what they're smoking over there, what they're selling, but it, it doesn't look good. And uh, there's other ways in which you can uh, make uh, places safe. They have, you know, glass windows now that don't break instead of bars. And I think bars should be absolutely eliminated and voted out of the city. It's not, it's not, uh, it has a bad cast on that neighborhood. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think uh, a number of years ago, there was a place on 12 Mile, it was just west of uh, Ponderosa, that was a store that had bars on the windows. Yeah. They had the last, coin phone in town, yeah. and uh, we took a position that nobody else will be putting bars on their windows on businesses in the city of Southfield. So 
I don't know where that went, but. Uh, uh, well, there's glass that is unbreakable. Yeah. That you can put in, and there's no way a car can't even go through it. Right. I don't know if we have uh, a log or an ordinance against that or not. Um, Mr. Brightwell. Um, Mr. Chair, um, I want to bring up something I brought up. I think it was May, April or May of uh, 2016, and it deals with Comcast Internet Essential. The reason it's coming back up now is that uh, Comcast just recently announced on August 22 of this year uh, that they were giving Internet Essentials to the city of Detroit. And this is the same program that, we, that they're offering here. And there's approximately 49,000 individuals in the state of Michigan utilizing this program. It's, the program is for income, low-income households with school-aged children and adults who receive federal housing and urban development assistance. And they are extending this particular program to the city of Detroit extensively, but it's already here in Southfield. You can get inter internet for $9.95 a month if you're eligible. Uh, and also, you might be eligible to purchase a, a uh, internet-ready computer for $150. And they are suggesting that you call their number, and then you, could pee, you would be um, uh, interviewed to determine whether or not you are eligible. The number is 855-846-8376. This is the same Internet Essential program I spoke about in April of, or May of 2016. And obviously nationwide people are actually using this. So if, if, you, are, if you think you're eligible or whether or not you just want to determine whether or not you're eligible, el eligible you know, please dial that number, 855-846-8376. And one other item that I want to uh, mention is that last month I mentioned that I will be bringing this up um, until uh, the date. It's a veteran stand down. It'd be October 5, up to October 4 through 5 of 2017. It will be held in Detroit, 3606 East Forest Avenue, Detroit, 48206. I did announce this uh, at our last televised session. At that time, I did, I did not have a number, telephone number, but here's a telephone number, 248. <laughs> 808-0929, and also a lady, a young lady at the VA downtown, her number is 313-576-3870, that is Miss Linda Johnson at the uh, VA. Uh, the veteran stand down is, for those particular days, they will be assisting veterans who are in need of um, services. And a, a, a military stand down it's pretty much uh, when the military actually stops all action and take, you know, take kind of like a house cleaning uh, issues and deal with uh, the uh, soldier, sailor, uh, marine needs. So those are the two announcements. They are very, fairly uh, significant. And, and that, as I mentioned before, I will be bringing this again about the veteran stand down until October. It is October 4 through 5 uh, of this year. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mandelbaum? Yes, thank you. Uh, today was the first day of school for many people, and I just want to remind everyone that children will be walking, biking, or even taking the bus to school, so please be cautious when you see the bus sign up. I've already received a complaint from someone uh, who has uh, a special needs child, and their people were just driving right past the bus with their red lights on and the bar down, so please be cautious when you uh, see the school bus and especially around um, school facilities. I also, um, there was a nice article in the Southfield Sun this past uh, week about the Southfield Human Services Pop Into Meet uh, this Wednesday from three to seven at the library. Um, you can learn about the many different programs that Southfield Human Services has to offer, including CHORE, and World Medical Relief, and of course you get um, some free popcorn. So that's the Wednesday from 3 to 7 at the library in the meeting room. Um, also, a new activity that it, we have coming up is a senior dance and soiree. 
being done by the Total Living Commission, the Co Commission on Senior Adults and, and Parks and Recreation. Uh, they are having on Thursday, September 14th from 7.30 to 9.30 a senior dance and soiree. And for more information, um, you can contact Human Services, 248-796-4540 um, to pre-purchase tickets at a lower cost. Um, also something that has uh, not been done in recent history um, with our Parks and Rec Department is the Southfield Pool will be open over the Labor Day weekend from two, from September 2nd through the 4th, 12.30 to 6 p.m. each day. Um, usually they close when school starts, but they're leaving it open over the weekend. Um, so hopefully everyone can take um, advantage of that and the weather will cooperate. Um, lastly, I'd like to, one of the speakers earlier this evening made reference to council procedure um, as, as it related to a vote to make a charter amendment to the, uh, on the ballot. And I'd like to ask our city attorney if she can clarify um, how that vote worked and whether or not, and I, I believe, uh, the city did follow proper protocol. Well, in order to place a, uh, a charter amendment on the ballot, there is a three-fifth vote of the members elect of council. It's not how many are there at a particular night. It is the members elect would be how many are in office. So three fifths of seven is 4.2, which would be five members would have to vote. And I, I don't recall the specifics that night, but we would have needed five votes in favor of putting it on, on the ballot. So if two members voted no, and the rest of the four members voted yes, it still would not count. Because, because there, there was not a seventh member there that night, so you couldn't have gotten to five that night. So is that fifth grade math? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank, yeah, you, it's thank you for that clarification. Maybe fourth grade, I don't know. I would, I would, you know, actually, if I, if I remember it correctly, actually, I do believe we had three no votes, because I believe, Don, you voted against it as well. About the charter you know, I, I do recollect that. Yes, he yes. did. Yes, there were three votes, uh, right, I think we were when good. it halted. Anyone else? <laughs> Is there anyone else? Okay, the next item, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just very briefly, um, I want to comment on the uh, grand opening we had last week for the Southfield Career Center. Uh, we are, um, our career center is the uh, first of its kind in Michigan to be located on a college campus. It's in the Marks Building on the north end of uh, Lawrence Tech. And it's a beautiful new facility um, that uh, is much more collaborative for, for the staff. Uh, this is a partnership with Oakland County, um, the Michigan Works Grant, and uh, Lawrence Tech in the city of Southfield. Uh, again, it's on um, Civic Center Drive on the north end of um, our, uh, uh, our Lawrence Tech campus and um, very well attended um, and uh, great resources there for people looking for uh, work or retraining um, uh, in various uh, career fields. That's all I have this evening. Okay, thank you. Administration? I have no items. Uh, up. Attorney? Nothing, Mr. President. Uh, we have a uh, change in the council starting time for September the 11th. Uh, before us, I need I'll hold, Mr. Chairman. support. It's been moved by Mr. Fricassi, supported by Mr. Mandelbaum, that we change the council meeting start time for September the 11th, 2017 to 5.30 so that uh, we can do the uh, community pride. Community pride. Uh, is there any discussion? I thought it was for my birthday party. Um, if, I, if I could correct, we're, we're changing the starting time from 6 o'clock to 6.30. I'm sorry. You said 5.30. I'm sorry. 
Well, the, the, it's to accommodate community pride, which starts at 5.30. And we need um, probably about an hour to present okay. the awards. So we're just going to move our um, committee of the whole meeting to 6.30. I moved the wrong, it's okay. wrong thing. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It is carried. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I think the treasurer wishes to be recognized. Oh, Mr. Treasurer? I just, wanted I, miss to, you? Sorry. I just wanted to remind the uh, the viewing audience that this is the last week to pay property taxes on their Southfield properties. Uh, deadline is August 31st, and we accept postmarks. So uh, we also have a 24-hour drop box outside City Hall, so that's available for residents. And we also have online payments available. We also offer deferments for people who can qualify for that. If the household income is below $40,000 and the uh, people are either veterans or age 62 years of age or older and household income is below $40,000, they can qualify for a deferment, which allows them to extend the time to pay taxes till uh, the end of February uh, with us. So uh, definitely I encourage people to take advantage of that. Uh, the deadline to apply for the deferment is actually September 14th. So uh, if anyone is able to or knows anyone that can qualify for it, please have them come in and uh, we can provide them that extension they need to provide a copy of their homestead. It's gotta be for primary homestead, uh, homestead properties um, and proof of income and proof of residency. Is there an interest charge on that deferment? No, there's no interest charge on that. Uh, we allow them to make partial payments, and so this way it makes it more affordable for people as um, and, and able to handle that um, the, the tax bill that uh, potentially can be an overwhelming burden for some of the uh, for some of our seniors and disabled uh, individuals. Mr. Chairman, wasn't there something to the treasurer? Isn't there something that veterans? Property taxes are waived now. Yeah. yeah. So, so there yeah. is for a hundred percent disability. It's got to be. Uh, there's got to be proof of a hundred percent disability, and uh, it's handled through the assessing department uh, that they will waive the uh, property taxes in those situations. And that is something that the assessing department handles, okay. and uh, th right. that also is something that they need to apply for. Um, well, uh, it's actually. The deadline for that is usually earlier than now. I thought the veterans got a break. Yes. Okay. And um, the, I'm sorry, the veterans also qualify for the deferment program as well. So that's in addition to the 62 years of age, um, the veterans and disabled are able to uh, participate in, in the deferment program. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is one thing that uh, uh, slipped my mind. Um, and that is, it was on the news that your driver's license, the current driver's license you have is no longer going to be acceptable if you're going to fly uh, domestic or uh, entrance into a government building. So you have to go to the, the, uh, the uh, clerk's office and, uh, and the Secretary of State's office, excuse me, the Secretary of State's office and get an upgraded license uh, doesn't cost any more, but it's going to have something special on it that will allow you to get on a plane for domestic flights and get into government buildings. So, it started. It started. They started uh, providing them uh, this Monday, t today, and I think it takes effect in another month or two. It's not right away, but uh, okay. It's it starts 20 October 1st 2020 right you'll need to have this ID but they started rolling it out right. yeah currently all right thank you for computers <laughs> uh, is there any other business to come before the council seeing no other business meetings adjourned